Welcome back to Vibes by Amicia, the lifestyle show that helps women 40 plus with lifestyle hacks to enjoy their 40s to the max through education, conversations, and inspiring interviews. I designed this podcast to empower all of us to be so inspirational that other people crave our vibes. And crave our vibes is something that I'm doing today, craving my um, guest vibes because y'all, she's got major, major vibes. So one thing I've been learning about, and this is something that I'm going to really be interested in sharing a little bit more with my guests, is I've realized that there's a there's a disproportionate number of minorities that are not able to secure funding for their startups. And my guest today has taken the challenge to help those who go unheard, who go unseen, who are sometimes not noticed to fund their dreams. Her track record includes corporate America. It takes, it goes to um, development, management, and planning. Her job has taken her throughout the world. And today, she serves as a stakeholder in so many and various capital venture funds. Welcome to the podcast, Stacey LaToyason. Thank you, Alicia. Did I say the last name correct? Yes, you did. Oh, my God. Yes, okay, good, did. good, good. I was supposed to ask you, how do you say the last name? But I just went for it. No, I'm, I'm extremely okay. happy to be here, um, especially to speak to the audience that you know, I mean, that's me. I'm 43. <laughs> you know, um, there's so many that. things that, that I wish people had that I had known when I was a lot younger that I feel, you know, I'm really excited to share that with your audience today. So hopefully yeah. I can reach somebody out there. I hope so. And I definitely believe you will, because if anything, um, just from reading about you, it's inspiring just just to have that background and to know who you are and get to know a little bit about you. First of all, congrats on your appointment to the Houston Hospice Board. I just saw that. It came through all of the um, the the Google searches that I was doing, and I was like, oh, I got to mention that because that's just something that's so exciting for you, I'm sure. Thank you. And um, so I met you recently, and I met you through someone, through a third person, but I was at a morning breakfast with the female founders and funders, and it's a great organization, a really great um, event that was organized and you're a part of that. And so when I saw that your name was there and I said, oh, you know what? That's a great opportunity for me to go meet you because I knew you were going to be in the podcast. We had talked a little bit um, and your message just really inspired me to just really just do more for the community and do more for people who are out there looking to fund their dreams or looking to maybe elevate on whatever they're doing. And I think that's something that really resonates with me and with you and something that I discovered about you that day. Um, you're very committed. Um, in a very, very intense, very real level to making things better for the community, the Latino community, the Latinas, and uh, the people that are underrepresented in our community. And so I was really glad that I went there. Stacy, today you're a powerhouse Latina in our community. You're especially influential to the people in Houston, but your life wasn't always like this. And one thing I did discover from just listening to other episodes of you, um, you were a young mother. Yes. You had your first baby boy at 17. So tell me about that and tell me how that um, influenced or what that meant for you as your sense of, of being of purpose. Yes. Um, so, um, so when I was in school, I absolutely loved learning. Um, and, you know, education was so important and it still is. And I still love to learn. Mm -hmm. And um, I was a straight A student. I wanted to go to Ivy League school and I was playing point guard basketball and getting a lot of scholarship offers. What but, high school um, was this? I, I graduated from Sci Falls High School. Okay. And then I got pregnant at 17. Mm -hmm. And so really my my dreams were shattered. Um, I didn't really have the um, support to say, okay, well, even mm -hmm. though you're pregnant, you know, you can still go on to college. You can still fulfill your dreams. Right. But I did have one friend who I used to go to the Calvin Murphy basketball camp with, uh, Michael LeBlanc. And he said, you know, my mom had me when she was 17. And I was like, what? Oh, wow. <laughs> and so just um, knowing one person that's still like, you know, in the same boat, but yeah. she still went on and graduated from LSU mm -hmm. and she was an executive at Texaco. And so I was always inspired by her. That, okay, if she can do it, I can do it. And that's kind of been my mantra throughout my career, um, just seeing other women who elevate and, you know, reach their full potential and feeling as if, okay, 
which I hope on this podcast, you know, I can do the same thing and inspire yes. other women. It's like, if I can do it and I had my baby at 17 and, you know, it was tough. It was definitely a challenge and a struggle going to school full time, right. working full time, um, you know, taking any other odd jobs as well. I was singing in a band at night. I was um, barely getting any sleep and raising my child alone. Yeah. Um, Do you find that those early challenges and early lessons led you to who you are today, to the person that you are today? Do you feel like they've, they molded you to being this strong powerhouse woman that you are today? I do. Mm -hmm. I actually do. In what ways do you um, think? Because no matter what I'm faced with, you know, I really feel like I have superpowers and I've been through a lot worse. And like, if I could have my baby at 17 and I'm a survivor of domestic abuse and, you know, still go on and yeah. go to college and I'm a single mom and now I've got two and still a single mom and, yes. you know, graduated with my master's, went back to school at Columbia to do venture capital and private mm -hmm. equity. And, you know, now I'm doing board service, but all, you know, there's always going to be something in life that kind of tries to throw you off track. Um, but I feel like, I can handle it because I, I did get through so much as a young mother. Yeah. Yeah. Those lessons really kind of like it's it's like somebody said I, I follow Tim Grover and he says a lot of those lessons are like um, scars or like they may they make you hardened and they make you stronger as you push through things. Um, you know, one thing that I also notice is you're you you're very educated. So is school for you like education like a salvation is it a place for you to go to? Is it something that makes you feel um, complete? You're, you're, you're highly educated. You like to learn. You're always, you know, looking to see where you can elevate yourself. What does education mean to you? Yes, I'm a lifelong learner. I am very passionate about it. You know, no matter what topic it is, you know, I feel like, let's say you like to, beauty, you know, you can yes. always learn more, take a course, go network, attend a conference. You know, you said you just went to a podcast yes. conference in Orlando. I mean, there's so many things and you're, you're learning from other people mm -hmm. who've been through it. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be college education because not, not, it's yeah. not always for everyone. And there's plenty of people who have been very successful entrepreneurs without a college education, but it definitely helped me uh, reach my foundation. Yeah, and so going through school as a young mother, how, what, how did you, how were you able to still go to school, graduate, even though you had all those challenges as a young mom? Um, what did you tap on, into? Well, I had to dig deep. You mm -hmm. know, there were times when it, it, it was so tough. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I barely got any sleep. I mean, when I reflect now and think back, I'm like, I don't even know how I, how I know I how did you do it. <laughs> but um, it's prioritizing your time yeah. and knowing what is important. And, you know, when for me, it was some people ask me now, oh, well, how come you're still single? You know, and I'm like, yeah. well, <laughs> my first priority is my child. It was then my education. It was my job. And so dating was like. Mm -hmm. last on the list you know especially because I started off in a very a very uh, tumultuous relationship very on so I mean very early on so with the father of your baby okay yes. yeah 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 and so being so young do you ever go back into the community and talk to the girls in the high schools yeah so the beautiful thing now um that I'm doing that now. I've always wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, I have the platform you right. know, such as being here on your podcast. I was just invited to speak to some high school students to share my story. And I've been on a couple of other podcasts, but it's very important to me to share that with them and let them know that no matter what you go through yeah. in life and no matter what age you're at, that yeah. you can always still chase your dream and don't let anything stop you. Do yeah. not let those Voices inside don't have any self doubt because self doubt is very powerful. It's so strong, especially for us. Mm -hmm. So many of us don't think that we deserve pursuing more and achieving more because we were told, you know, just be happy with what you've got. And we're not. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I want to no. always do more. Me too. Yeah. Me too. And the more things that I'm, uh, more accomplishments and the more yeah. that I'm networking and meeting mm -hmm. more people, the, um, I'm being filled with even yeah. more ideas and dreams and, and ways that I can give back to the community. So I'm, I'm 
nowhere near uh, my full potential or where I want to be yet. Yeah, like no, and that's exciting. It's just beginning. Right, that's exciting. I think the other thing that I remember thinking about being in high school and, and thinking about those days back in high school, mentorship was very important. And um, having come from a neighborhood where, you know, the the statistics, you know, were not were not very so not very good for us to go to school. There was no money. There was no way for us to go to college. So mentors who would come into the schools, we absorbed their knowledge, their information, you know, and so many of us capture that and so many of us didn't. What do you think it is about those of us that capture that and like push, 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 because you push through challenges. I pushed through not having money through co- for college and like figuring out how to get scholarships. What is it in some, some of us that tells us, it, yeah, this is, this is what we are right now, but this is who we, we don't have to be this. We can be more. Where does that come from? Well, I, you know, I think it, it's an inner drive mm-hmm. that, and just a voice that says, uh, I have to do this, you know, I have yeah. to go in, in a belief and in, in confidence in yourself, um, you know, to put yourself out there to, you know, show up and to listen and to learn and absorb as much as you can. But also it's about um, information and access to information and yes. to mentors and not enough of our um, people in our communities have access. Mm hmm. Um, but you know what, even though some of us who do have some access, not everybody takes advantage of it. Not everybody sees it. And like, that's one thing that I realized about being at the school where I went to school. Some of us saw those opportunities and we grab them. And some of us were too afraid to do that. And yeah, and you can't let fear hold you yeah, back. And fear again. that is also, you know, with a lot of people have anxiety and mm-hmm. fear in that holds them back their entire lives. And if you can get help and meet therapy or someone that you talk can talk to and you can confide in and you trust, um, then hopefully you can get over that. There's this mentality of like people, young people, not like I heard that and I read this somewhere and it said something like, don't go looking for your mentors. Let the mentors come look for you and they will seek you out because they will see something special in you. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think sometimes we need to grab onto people, even though sometimes they're not showing aptitude. Oh, I I totally disagree with that. Yes, I do too, but it's... I've seen it in corporate America. Yeah. You know, there are people who maybe they went through a special MBA development program and they've been groomed their entire careers and moved around and introduced to things and um and given certain opportunities that other very hardworking smart professionals who yes. are just as capable or even more um don't get the same opportunities and so they have to go that extra step mm-hmm. and even if the company isn't offering it to you and not paying for it it is extremely important to invest in yourself whether that's uh, an executive coach or it's attending a conference that you feel is really going to help enhance and accelerate your career. Don't wait for somebody else to, you know, hand it to you because that just doesn't happen. No, that isn't going to happen. And just waiting for somebody to see the talent in you, that's definitely not going to happen. I always believe you have to kind of tell people who you are and what you're, what you're capable of and what you're willing to do. Right. But it does take a sense of courage. Yes. to go that place. And and it's very important to refine your skills. I mean, one of the things that I, I use an example of is some professional athletes or even JLo. Okay. Yeah. When she's when she's going to go on tour. I mean, she's yes. in there like the hardest working <laughs> dancing, you know, she's producing she the show. So I mean, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, she's not just sitting on her laurels. It's like, Oh yeah, the people show up. Like she is working very hard, you know, and, um, and same thing with, you know, the athletes, <clears throat> they're watching their, their diet and their health and their, you know, getting massages and ice baths and their, you know, first one in the gym, last one to leave. Yes. It's like, yes. you've got to have that kind of mentality, especially if you want to stay on top and be one of the best and the greatest. Yeah. 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 I read the Tim Grover book and he always says that like Michael Jordan showed up, you know, when nobody else showed up or Kobe was up in the morning, four or five yeah. o'clock in the morning, you know, doing that. And Jennifer, I saw her, her documentary where she was, you know, for the Super Bowl. 
And I think that's one thing about for like for us and for me, for example, when I'm hired to do something or I'm given an opportunity for something, I go at it 110% because I want to show that there's value in you putting your investment in me and that you would believe in me. And I go 110% and I probably don't even have to go that far, but I want to, because I want you to see your investment in me mattered. And that's kind of why I, I feel like mentors are so important because they teach you that they tell you those things. Um, my parents would have never said that to me ever. That's something I learned outside of my family. I mean, they teach you work ethic and they teach you integrity and principles, but um, going out into the workforce, you were in corporate America. Who told you how to pursue those, those different steps, how to, how to rise in the corporate ladder? Oh, I didn't have somebody to tell me and give a specific steps. A lot of it was, you know, learning. Maybe I hit a couple of hurdles, but um, really just growing. I feel like I've grown the most in the past year. Oh, wow. During the pandemic. Um, just having the time to reflect on uh -huh. what I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, you know, am I really happy? with other people making decisions for me. No, I want to put, I decided to put my own fate in my own hands and, yes. um, and use the experience that I gained in corporate America to start my own business, dream big ventures, because it's very important to me to invest in our community and to provide opportunities for women and diverse led businesses and, and mm -hmm. startups. I read that there was a, a presentation that you attended where Serena Williams Williams was speaking, and she mentioned that there's only 2% of cap, venture capital funds that are allocated to minorities, and that hit her hard. And so you also, when you attended that conference and you attended that presentation, it hit you just the same. What, did, what effect did that talk have on you, and, and, and how did it lead you to, to your next Thing to what we were talking about. Yeah, I mean, that was the impetus that um, the moment, the defining moment for me that I knew, oh my God, only 2% of funds are given to, oh, like, yeah, this isn't is that atrocious. Crazy? This is ridiculous. You know, it's 2022 and now it's 2023. But, and so I felt like, you know, I know you hear that number and it sounds crazy it's it's just ridiculous anyway. because we're so much of the population in mm -hmm. this country but only two percent of those funds go to minority-led corporations so what so you took on that challenge you heard that presentation and it hit you and it affected yeah. you yes so again i said well if she can do it i can do it so that's that's my mission and purpose i love waking up every day um it's something that's new, so I'm learning as I go, and I'm meeting incredible founders that are so creative with all these different uh, ideas for innovation that are going to help shape our future. So, I mean, it's fun, it's, um, it's challenging, but I, I love it. Tell us a little bit about that. Tell us a little bit about uh, the Dream Big Venture Capital. Explain to my audience what it means to be a venture capitalist, because that's something that you are very passionate about, something you're doing now. But I don't know if it's something that we're very familiar with. Correct. Yeah. And before that, I attended the conference. I was not very familiar with it yeah. either. And then I decided to go to Columbia and go through their program. Um, and now I'm a limited partner in several funds. So basically, you're raising funds for um, a portfolio of companies and you have a thesis um, you know, whether it's like I'm, I'm focusing on women and diverse founders, mainly mm -hmm. in the medical, like health tech and um, energy transition, climate tech, you know, since Houston is an emerging market and this is what we do so well. And I have the 22 years of um, energy experience. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's like things that we use every day, Uber, Lyft, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, yeah. you know, they all started off as just a, a startup. A startup. It was somebody's mm -hmm. idea. And they had people who came in early on and invested, you know, provided funds for them to like get to this. So I'm, I invest in early seed stage uh, okay. rounds. Okay. And you bring in other investors or do you select from a group of people? Because I noticed on your website, you can submit an application to, to receive funds or maybe you go through an application process. 
how do people go about if they have something that they want to show you? Yeah, so it it's a combination of um, high net worth individuals, or you know, if or you know, our average, you've got an extra ten thousand dollars, and you're interested in 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 making some investments. You know, you could contact me and, and email me. Um, are you finding it hard? Or are you finding it easy to find those people to join you? Well, the amazing thing is some people are very um, driven by the mission and um, and they want to help. So I'm mm -hmm. getting calls like, hey, can I have coffee? You know, let me know when you launch your fund because I want to be an investor in your fund. You know, I, yeah. I love what you're doing and I want to be a part of it. So I'm I'm getting a lot of that and I'm like pinching myself. Are you finding that they're they're joining because they believe in the fund or they believe in you and what you can do for others? Oh, I think well it's they, a combination. Yeah, they believe in me and um and what I can do with others and they want to help support that mission. Yeah. I want you to meet my favorite bilingual realtor, Elmer Garcia. You all know that a passion of mine is real estate investing, and having a great realtor by your side is essential. Elmer knows the city of Houston like the back of his hand, and not only is he highly regarded by his clients, but also by the professionals in his field. I can tell you from experience that he is attentive, trustworthy, thorough and detail oriented. He knows what I like y'all and seeks out opportunities for finding the right property for me. His services range from residential real estate to commercial and investment. He will guide you the entire way. I can tell you that. You can email him at elmerg.realtor at gmail.com or call him at 832-512-5752 or you can also find him on Instagram, elmergarcia underscore real estate. And don't forget, anything real estate is his forte. Um, the health and wellness component of it, la the Latino community is, or the you know the minority community just doesn't have a lot of faith, or doesn't really not faith, but I think they don't um, trust. Um, doctors or clinics and I have a problem with like pharmacies myself and doctors as a whole because I find that a lot of community doctors take advantage of of people who don't have a voice or sometimes don't speak the language um what are some of the things that you're seeing out there that you're, ex that you're excited about that you're thinking oh that would be like a great startup a great thing for for us to invest in mm -hmm. what's exciting you okay so I, I recently um invested in it's called SpexX. And so they go into indigenous communities. Okay. Um, where these kids, they're not they're they're not performing as well as they could be in school because they can't see. And um. you know, they need glasses, but they just don't have access. So the they go and they have these uh, pop up optometry clinics in remote communities. Wow. So that they're able to get glasses and when who create contacts. Who's who's the founder for that? Is that a person who was in the oh, medical one, field? Yes, and one of them is is a woman founder. Oh. So you know, it kind of goes with my thesis of investing in women led and um, diverse founders. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, and then I also invested in a fund where it's two Latinos, and it's a husband and wife. And okay, we're actually going to bring them to Houston in April for um, an investment investor series that I'm hosting at the ION. Mm -hmm. I'm super excited about the Mendoza Venture Fund. They raised $100 million, um, and they've got Bank of America as their anchor mm -hmm. uh, for that fund. So also with venture capital, I mean, there, there's high net worth individuals, mm -hmm. but you also have corporate institutions, university endowments, pension funds, and uh, family offices. That, and you don't need um, to be a millionaire to be an investor, correct? Well, to be an accredited investor, you do. Okay, so there's a, a certain amount that you have to prove. There's a... a yes. But, okay. for example, um, I'm part of a Houston Women's Investment Group, and all of us pooled our funds together to invest as shareholders in Agility Bank, which yeah. is a woman-owned bank that recently opened in Houston. Mm -hmm. It's like the first of its kind, so it's you know, super exciting. I mean, the shareholder meeting, there were 
people in tears and mothers and yes. daughters there together because it just goes to show we're like, hey, you know, why it doesn't have to be a man always running the banks. Right. I mean, we're the ones who most of the time make the decision in our households anyway on where we spend the money. Yes. So um, it's a really great mission that I'm uh, very excited to be a part yes, of. Yes, I read about that. And I know a few of the women that are on there and I'm like, that is such an exciting thing. What a wonderful way for you to do something that also impacts people, you know, who are looking for loans, who are looking to grow their own businesses. I think one thing that I always have this question is like, well, how do you pay for everything that goes on in your business? Well, there's different ways that you pay for it. Either you can do some of your money or you can use loans or you can use somebody to come and invest. I mean, there's, there's just multiple yeah. ways. And I think a lot of people are just not aware of some of those things. And I think what you're talking about, it's like, Finding those 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 um, businesses, those startups that are wanting to do something different, something unique that's going to impact the women or the women are, are, that you're looking at, at helping. And I don't know if, the, if, if we realize how, you know, that that's possible, that mm. that's a possibility for so many it people. Um, and I also wanted to share with your listeners yes. how important it is to surround yourself with people that, you know, you can learn from and that you can grow from. Um, so my circle of friends and confidants and colleagues, you know, like in our investment group, every time we have a meeting, it, I always leave there just feeling so empowered because, I mean, we have women that are CEOs and entrepreneurs. Who, yes. Who are state reps, who are judges, who are attorneys with their own firm. I mean, you like it runs a gambit and it's just like every time we get together, it's like, wow, you know, we, we just that. absorb and we learn so much from each other and we support each other in our events and, um, you know, and discuss potential <clears throat> investment opportunities. And it's just like, it's amazing to have that. Yeah. That circle. Yeah. Because I remember mentioning networking with you the last time we spoke when we were talking a little bit about that. And we talked about how networking for us or for some people, we really kind of go to a network or we go to an event with a goal or with an intention to yes. meet people or to really make a connection with someone who may help us with something that we're working on, for example. But um, I know that you and I just talked about this. And I feel like for us, sometimes a lot of the people in the community go to events or they try to find events to make it like a social opportunity, like photo opportunity. And that bugs me. Does that bug you? Yeah. You know, to me, because I'm, I find that that's just such a useless use of your time. It's yeah. just so, so unworthy. Remember this. Yeah. Ta time is currency. Time you know? is currency. Guys. So if you decide to go and spend your time at a networking event or a conference or summit, or it's like, you've got to maximize that time. And so you should, before you go there, prepare you know yeah. what is it that I want to get out of this yes. who do I want to meet and hear from be intentional exactly and and then go to the front you know meet people um afterwards like take take notes and make sure that you're taking action so that you can show like what did I gain from this mm -hmm. you know, did and I follow grow up. from this yes and follow, follow up. up you know otherwise yeah you no know, maybe not, it wasn't really yeah because I mean we've got jobs we've got families yeah. to take care of you know I mean there's so right. many other things that we could be doing with our time so I know and I think that's one thing that we really definitely need to really like emphasize and I tell this to the women who who listen and the women who follow me and who come to me for advice I always say you definitely want to follow the proximity principle like be around the people that you're you're going to see the right place at the right time for the opportunities that you're looking for and that is if you want to grow that is if you're looking to to enhance your career or to to go to the next level in whatever you're doing, whatever it is, you know, for me, like that, that book with the Ken Coleman book, I read it and it was a proximity principle, like always surround yourself around people who you're going to feel like are going to embolden you and then give you that courage and yes. give, or give you information or some resources, some tools for you to go to the next level. Mm -hmm. But I find that so many people really don't, don't go to, you know, networking with an intention to 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 connect to really connect not just to have followers not just to you know send somebody to your instagram for oh you know just follow me because of you know i'm so cute and adorable and beautiful what else is there right what else can you gain from going to conferences 
going to networking events. You are someone that does networking because you need to as, as your job, you know, because you do need to find those high net worth people. Um, how, how are you, how are you, what's a good way to approach somebody that you want to connect with? Well, um, I would say, you know, approach with a smile, um, come with some questions, you know, you can really show that you paid attention. Like, let's say there was a speaker that Mm -hmm. you wanted to come and, you know, maybe ask another question that wasn't asked by the audience. Um, but also, you know, let them know who you are. Um, and what you're doing, but also end it with, is there something I can do for you? Like, how can I help you? Because it's, it's a two way street, right? Yeah. And, and you have to know what value you bring And you know, um, like I'm a real great, a super connector, you know, network pretty flawlessly. And so are you naturally an extrovert? I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever done your MBTI, your, um, what is that? What is it? The Myers Briggs personality I, yeah, test? Yeah, and it was definitely extrovert. <laughs> extrovert. Yes, I always have been. Um, yeah, yeah. And I actually feel more comfortable singing and dancing in front of an audience yeah. than speaking, but <laughs> I'm getting more comfortable with that now. Good. Yeah, yeah. no. Yeah, for me too. I'm an, I'm an ESTJ, and so every time I uh, approach things, I'm like, gosh, I shouldn't be so damn intense about it. And I go so hard at it because I go up to people and I'm like super like, you know, interested in what they're doing. And I'm thinking maybe that's not a good approach either. Like, you know, the, it's the other extreme, <laughs> like, okay. You know, you could be like, okay, at least it's like stalking me. She's here at the breakfast. Like yeah. I just met her. Why is she here? But I just want to be interested. I just want to be involved, you know, and want to know more about things. So Stacey, you're, you're, you're a busy woman. You are connecting all the time. You're visiting with people. You're setting up meetings. You're um, talking about your business. What do you do to not um, not buy into the, the the hustle culture or to always be on that constant grind? Or are you part of the hustle culture? Oh, I am part and of the hustle okay with that. culture, 100%. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's kind of... And there's no I, shame I'm in that. I'm very driven and ambitious. And I think a big reason why I am where I am now, and I'm not, like I said, I'm I'm not satisfied where I am now. There's still so much more to do and to learn and to teach and to inspire. So yeah, um, definitely. Like every day I wake up ready, yeah, ready to go. Yes. Yeah. And with some goals, I look at my calendar, you know, I mean, I work out every morning first because you have to take care of you and yeah. make sure that, you know, I've got the energy and, um, you know, and trying to eat right. But I definitely have that. Yeah. That go-getter. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Um, cause there's now a movement to, to back off from grinding all the time or from doing things all the time or like from always well, you, doing I stuff. Think you have to be smart. Okay. Yeah. So it's not when, just and, doing. And when I was a lot younger, when my son was little and I was in my twenties, I did too much. And it was like, I was the parent, the room parent teacher. Yeah. I'm working full time. I'm going to school at night. I'm also coaching his team. I'm also you know, like, it was just too much so you have to edit you know i think like really look and prioritize Prioritize. you know what is important to you and how you're going to spend your time each day sometimes you have to say no and i think that's the smart hustle Mm -hmm. right doing it for the things that are actually going to get you somewhere um one thing that i also just remember just reading about is like the the opposite of 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 focus is distraction and I think that's one of the things that we're constantly distracted. We're distracted by everything, whether yes. it's social, social whether media, it's events, yeah, reality, social media, TV. reality TV. I'm like, I'm sorry, but I don't have time to watch this other person. Now, if they're giving some good tips about, hey, you know, if you do this, maybe this will help out. But I'm not going to, I don't watch Kardashians and all that. Right, you know, right. Like, no, no. Yeah. I find myself saying, you know, well, did I do everything I needed to do? Yeah, I did everything I needed to do. Okay, now it's time for me to just watch some trash TV. But I, I have like a guilt thing that if like, oh, if I didn't do everything that I set myself out to do, I'm not going to go do the fun mm-hmm. part yet until I could get all the production. Right. Everything that, that leads to me being productive that day. So there's there's women out there. There's people out there. They're 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 wanting to get on more boards. They're wanting to participate more in you know in um in 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 events in the city of Houston. How how do we go about doing that? What can you say? I mean, you said networking definitely getting yourself 
there, getting putting yourself in the right place. What else can, could we do? Do what else do we build up in our toolbox? So if you are talking about your professional career, right? I mean, I guess Instagram, a lot of businesses use Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, you know, LinkedIn is also a good tool that it's free. And so you also should evaluate it and see, you know, do you have the right information on there? Are you really promoting yourself the way that you should? Um, are, are you including all of your accomplishments there? So, I mean, you can... Um, you know, take a look at that. Don't be shy. Put everything on there. Things that are relevant. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. Things that are that, relevant. Yeah. That show you know your your experience, um, different organizations that you're on, board positions. What if you don't have much of a background, but you want to grow into creating a background for yourself? I think. Um, well, you need to know what's important to you because um, it's a commitment. It's. Um, not something that, oh, I think I want to do this today, and then you change your mind tomorrow. I mean, it's it's yeah. a commitment to really help that organization. So you want to get, um, because you're a partner there, and you've got a responsibility for governance and, um, and you know, helping to grow and to promote it and support it. So you want to make sure it's something that aligns with your values. Yeah. Okay. And, and in order for you to be nominated for something, do you tell people you want to be nominated for a certain position or you see a board or open opening and you say, I would really do a good job at that? Do you go to the board president? Do you go to someone on the board? What do you do? Mm -hmm. How do you get your name in there and get your name inside the box? Oh, you can start by supporting that organization. You know, if they see like, oh, this person's really showing up, they're really like mm -hmm. um, a, a great partner in what we're doing and very supportive. So volunteering, showing up for um, like the annual luncheons or galas and um, maybe volunteering to be part of one of the committees. Mm -hmm. That way you get to know the people too, to see yeah. if those are the people that you want to work with for the next three to 12 so years. True. Because as I said, it's a long-term commitment. So mm -hmm. you have to make sure that also the people who are on the board that you, that you, you know, align good, with them exactly. and their values align yes. with yours as yes. well. Have you found yourself uh, involved in an organization that you thought, oh, my God, this is not for me? And I, I mean, you don't have to tell us the name, but <laughs> did you come to that conclusion at some point? And you're like, oh, I need to get out of here. Oh, let's see. <laughs> I did just retire in September. You did. <laughs> <laughs> so there was that. Naming any yeah. names. <laughs> yeah. I know. I learned a lot. And so now I'm just um, really spreading my wings I and growing that. so much more since... Uh, and I've always had this entrepreneur spirit in me. So I'm, I'm yeah. really happy where I'm at right now. I love that. And I can see that energy coming out and just that, that, that excitement. Yeah. For that next I get step. a chance to know. wake up every day and decide how I'm going to spend my time and what's important yeah. to me. Wow. So, okay. What can my audience do to support you and what you're doing? How can we come and say, Stacey, this is where I can jump in and help you out. What are some ways? Um, well, I am going to host an investor series. Okay. Um, at the ION, the first one is on March 9th. And this is with um, in partnership with Angeles Investors, which mm -hmm. is uh, Latino investors investing in Latino-led um, startups. So okay. It would be great to have the community there. When okay. It, to show um, up, support. To show up support, but also, wow, you're going to be learning a lot. I mean, it's going to definitely be worth the hour oh, it's definitely or two that about, you come. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, it's going to be learning about these alternative venture capital investments. Wow, and, that's, that's good. And different founders and that we've already um, invested in and you know, just talking about. Yeah. And you'll be able to ask any questions that you have So and, and you get to network afterwards. We'll have like a happy hour afterwards. So if they see you out and about come up to you, talk to you. Is that okay? Yes, of course, of course. <laughs> Say hi yes. and uh, and definitely show up to the things that we all show up for. And definitely not just show up for the fun stuff. Show up for the stuff where, we, you know, somebody's accomplishing something yes. important and not just, you know, for the and cute so pick. <laughs> that's the first in the series. Then April 19th. April 19th. Um, hosting Mendoza Ventures. That's the one I told you, the couple from Boston who are backed by Bank of America, and they raised a $100 million fund. Um, they concentrate on cybersecurity, 
fintech and AI. So that's going to be a very interesting seminar. What's fintech? Finance. Finance. Things that are uh, related to. I confuse it with femtech. Yeah. Fin, yeah. Fin. <laughs> fin. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then April in 19th. May, I'm hosting another one um, where the topic is invest in yourself. So, we'll, yeah, we're going to have, uh, her name is Luz. And Luz, we trust. Diana Garcia. Yes, I follow them on oh, Instagram. Yeah. Okay, so she's going to come. Uh, talking about direct investing in the stock market. And then I'm also going to have um, a Latina realtor or broker in town to talk about real estate. Oh, investing. very cool. And then I'll be talking about venture capital investing. So, you know, they'll get a, a good um, plethora of information and in, in diverse ways to invest. So it's going to be very informative and and fun. You yeah, know, it's be like you definitely when you come to our <laughs> events, it's going to be informative, but also like really fun. And that does sound like fun. And it really does sound interesting. You have a full calendar already, Stacy. Wow. Yeah, I'm speaking at um, Rice University's Women in Leadership Conference okay. in February. Guys, we're going to have all of these links on the, <laughs> on the description. Yeah, um, because I definitely want to make sure that everyone knows where they can come and participate and learn more. I think yes. it's important. And let me tell you, I highly encourage you, maybe you've heard of vision boards. And, you know, if you haven't done one, it's a great thing to do, especially at the beginning of the year. And it's like just writing things down that you yeah. want to do in life. And uh-huh. then you go back like the following year or two years and you're like, wow, I mean, I, yeah. I did that. I accomplished it. You know, I mean, it's like so satisfying. So I had written down South by Southwest and now mm-hmm. in March, I'm going to be a judge at the pitch competition. Wow. So it's on your board. Yes. How yeah. Cool. So I'm like pinching myself like, yes, you know, it's really exciting. That is exciting. But there's also a component of execution. You don't just manifest it. You actually execute on those things, right? And so you probably filled out an application. You said, you know, you spoke to somebody about getting you on there. Yes. And yes. Yeah. And you build up on your networking as well, right? Yes. yes. And, you know, if you don't say anything, yeah. nobody's, nobody's going to know. know. They can't read your mind. So yeah. don't be shy. If you see that there's something like I've also been a judge at the ION for their startup showcases. And it's because I spoke up. I'm like. How come every time I come here, it's only male judges on the panel? And so, oh my god! Yeah, and Joey's like, "Oh well, are you busy on Wednesday?" I'm like, "No." He said, "Well, there you go. You're the next judge." I'm like, "Oh, so that means sometimes it's all you have to do is just speak up." Yes, <laughs> ladies, speak up, please. <laughs> like, don't you know? Just it takes status quo as it is. Maybe things can change. We speak up and say something. Um, Stacy, it's been awesome. I'm so inspired by you and I just love everything that you're doing and gosh, you know, if I can be of help or in any way and just as a supporter, count on me because I love everything that you're doing and I I really appreciate if you're putting yourself out there like that because there aren't many people having that courage, you know, to just say, hey, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I'm just not going to just say it. I'm actually doing it. Thank you so much, Alicia. It has been a pleasure. And um, and you. I do hope that I meet your listeners. So, yes, please. And, Y'all need to go and, find her and stalk her like I did that morning. I just went and like, oh, she's going to be there. I'm going to go stalk her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't. I wasn't. <laughs> I can be a little crazy, but not that crazy. Oh, Jamal, don't, don't roll your eyes. I see you rolling your eyes. <laughs> oh, so thank you so much. I think we learned a lot, guys. We are just having such a blast. You know, we learned that time is oh, time is I, currency. Cur- currency, guys. Yes. Prioritize yes. your 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 days. Don't spend it all the t- all day long on some dumb shit. Really prioritize it. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that this uh, this is adult, <laughs> huh? I can use oh, we curse can, words. Oh, we I mean, a lot. I'd be kind of like. <laughs> uh let's see hi we have let's go time is currency you guys don't forget that she's got a lot of events if coming you see up. her you can be her yes yes if you see her you can be her Ooh. Mm-hmm. okay that's a t-shirt yes that's a great <laughs> great one guys so so grateful for you guys to be here and listening and i appreciate you so much every week you come by and you stop in and you give me a little bit of your ear to listen to some inspiration, to listen to some education, something that might lead you to elevating whatever you're doing. Stacey, and it's been awesome. Yes, thank you. go ahead. Oh, one more thing. Yes, I noticed please. 
we've got to stop saying minority because oh, and, and I'm and I've that. been intentional about not using that what anymore. Word we I'm move trying to? to use diverse or underrepresented or underestimated because pretty soon we are going to be the majority wow, majority especially right. in this city in Houston where we're like 44% of the population. So good but, point. Yes. Good point. Yeah, we're not minorities we're moving, anymore. Moving from that. You know, Shavana one time said, we're not using the word guys anymore. We're saying ladies too. And I keep forgetting. And she she did tell me not to use guys anymore. And I keep using it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's a lot of, you know, years of like uh, internal conditioning. Whatever. I know. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for being here. And people, you guys can find her on Instagram. You can find your website. It's... Give us your website yeah. or where people can like send you a message yeah. if they want to get a hold of you. It's Dream Big Ventures LLC dot com. Perfect. And on Instagram and on LinkedIn as well. It's happy to hear from any of you if you have additional questions and um, we'll definitely respond. Thank you. Thank you. We've had a great time. We appreciate your time. Too. Thank you so much. I love the vibes. It's definitely Buena Vibes. <laughs> <laughs> I. I would have I would have known uh, to 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 cast a little more if you were comfortable with it because we're kind of crazy <laughs> over here. <laughs> we just had a sex doctor last week and everybody was cringing. All the men were cringing. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was talking about sexual health, Doctor Marashi. His episode is up and it was so good. And he brought prompts, but all the men in here, my boy, to all my husband, they're like, I can't, I can't. I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, women energy, awesome. Thank you so much, Stacey. 